Thank you.
Welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome to another week of our virtual live stream shows. Today, we have Kara P presenting a charcuterie board preparation class. Take it away, Kara. Okay. Hi, guys, and welcome to my kitchen. It's so great to see you. Oh, you came back. I'm so happy that you wanted to join us today. I hope everybody is enjoying their Sunday. I know I am. And, you know, it's funny because on Sundays, I think of this as like a rest day. And I also think it's a great time to prepare for the week. And a charcuterie board or like a crudite platter is a really good way to do that because it's like you're prepping your snacks for the week and you can just go in the refrigerator and, and grab something and it's good to go. So even if you do not use all of the ingredients that I have displayed today, you can still use it for another meal. So let's get things first, going first. The first thing that we do when we handle food, what is it? Do we go gardening? Do we change the garbage? Do we crawl on the floor on our hands and knees? You know I'm joking. That's right, we have to wash our hands. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is make sure if I wash my hands, especially now for COVID, it's really important that we are you know, sanitized, and keep them clean. And the same thing goes for our produce. I actually have pre-washed everything so that I'm all set for you guys. And I would like to show you what I plan on putting on my charcuterie board. Now, let me just tell you, during COVID it's kind of difficult because people have you know, limited incomes and you try to stay home. So you can use anything that you have in your fridge. That's what's so great about these platters. What do you have in your fridge? Oh, that is a great idea. No, I did not think to add banana slices, but you could make like a fruit crudite platter or a charcuterie board. That's a good idea. I will keep that in mind. So without further ado, let us take a look at what I have today. I have with me a cutting board. Any cutting board will do. Just keep in mind you need something that's not going to scratch the surface because I do have some knives. I also have with me here some heirloom carrots. Yes, believe it or not, these are all carrots. And I think the colors make it more fun. And you'll see when I cut the purple carrots, when you cut the center, it looks like a tree being cut. And there's like different rings of colors. It's really pretty and presentable. I also have with me here my oven roasted turkey breast. And by the way, I am a big fan of Trader Joe's. And I do recommend their produce because they're reasonably priced and they're healthy. I also have with me here some Persian cucumbers. These are great because you can put them in salads, pastas, charcuterie boards, you name it. Of course, a charcuterie board must include peppers. So I have three different colors. And again, it's to make it look presentable. That's actually a very important part of this process is making it so that your guests, your friends, your family want to eat it. Raise your hand if you like vegetables. You like vegetables? I love vegetables. Do you know what my favorite vegetable is? Close, not spinach. Nice, okay. I do like carrots. It's kale, believe it or not. But not everybody likes kale. So this is another way to eat your vegetables and it's not a salad. You see what I'm saying? To continue the wonderful ingredients I have. I have some olives, okay. I like the Kalamata olives, but if you have green olives, or black olives, that's great. I also have with me here, these are dehydrated heirloom carrots. So you saw these carrots, which are fresh. These are just dried out carrots and they're great chip replacement. It's literally one ingredient. Of course I have my sun-dried tomatoes. Do you like sun-dried tomatoes? I know that it's not always a favorite. Well, I didn't like it when I was a kid either, it's okay. I also have my absolute favorite, some medjool dates. Now these guys are like caramel. They're so sweet and it's incredible. If you ate like a bag of these, you'd have enough energy to hike a mountain. They are a superfood and I recommend them. These happen to be pitted. That's something else you need to keep in mind. When you have your olives, just remember there, there might be a pit in there. So I also have with me here some tomatoes. Tomato, tomato, you got it. Oh, you have the same thing I have, very nice. And I also have some broccoli. 
Broccoli is a no brainer. You know, you, you can do so much with it and it tastes so good if you add cheese to it or some sort of dip. I also have with me here some figs. These are Turkish figs. I know they're not the prettiest things, but they're delicious. You know fig newtons? Yes, you know. Yes, they're, they're just like the fig newton cookies. That's what these are. They just look a little different. And of course I have my salted pistachios because these are great pickets for charcuterie boards. I also have with me here some mozzarella because I think that cheese is always a good idea to have on your platter, especially with your cold cuts. And by the way, if you have salami, if you have chicken, ham, all of it works. Um, a lot of times the board requires salty and crunchy things. I like to switch it up with a bunch of stuff. So I have with me here a nice glass bowl, which I recommend you have as well, because we are going to be putting our vegetable scraps in there. And there's a lot you can do with it in the end, we will discuss. I also have with me here some different cutting knives. Now, yes, they're very sharp. I'm glad that you pointed that out, exactly. So if you need help, maybe an adult can help you do it, or sometimes they have like plastic knives that are safe and you're not gonna get cut, which is great. This one I happen to like because it, it's, it has a good grip and I can cut smaller vegetables. I also have this guy. I know they look similar, but they, they all come in handy. And this is probably my favorite. Do you have a carrot shredder? Yes, uh-huh. I have like three, but they come in handy. You can shred carrots, or at least you're gonna scrape off the skin with me, or you could use it for like to scrape off beet skin, you name it. So the first thing I'm going to do, and like I told you, I cleaned my produce already. So you need to make sure you sanitize your vegetables because think about it, they're just standing, they're just hanging out at the store waiting for people to grab them and touch them. So we wanna make sure that our food is, is clean and, and no germs. I think the first thing I'd like to start out with, with you guys, is preparing the heirloom carrots. Will you help me? I appreciate your help. So I am going to first show you that these guys need a little work. You see, we got these little ends over here. That might be fine for some, it is not fine for me. So what I'm going to do is firmly hold the carrot and I'm going to cut the ends off and I'm gonna to toss this fella into my glass bowl. I am a firm believer, and we're gonna cut off the other end as well, of cleaning up as we go along because I don't like big messes. That's just me. Do you like big messes? No, I don't think you do. Glad we're on the same page. Now, I just wanna point out that I don't know how much of each I'm going to use, and that's okay. I do recommend having a little extra of supplies, and you don't necessarily have to use them all but it's sometimes better to have a little extra than not enough. But if you don't have enough of something, then go in your fridge and fill it up with something else. See, we're gonna cut off the ends. Now, I do recommend rinsing the carrots off just because, oh, remember I told you that when we cut the purple carrot, it looks like a tree, it has all different colors and rings, isn't that pretty? I know, this is actually a carrot, it tastes just like an orange carrot. Yes, have you ever tried purple carrots? What did you think of them? Couldn't tell the difference, right? All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna take my glass bowl and I'm going to take my carrot and I'm gonna start shredding it. And let's look at the difference in color. You can see that it's much darker when I peel off the top layer of the skin. It's just dried skin. Um, if you eat it, it's no big deal. Now, I'm holding this firmly. I have my index finger and I'm pressing down and I want you to keep in mind, even though I'm not really that close to the blade, this is still a blade. So you need to be very careful. When you're preparing a charcuterie board, guys, or anything in the kitchen, you should not be rushing because that's when accidents can occur. Yes, I'm really glad to see that you're being careful. Yes. Oh, your dad likes charcuterie boards? I don't know if my dad does. I'm gonna have to ask him. And by the way, thank you for asking me how my day is. It's been so wonderful. Oh yes, I wanna show you again. Look how pretty this carrot is. How many colors is that? Three or four? I'd say so. It's pretty impressive. Now I hate to disappoint, but the orange carrot and the whitish carrot are one color. That's okay. And I also wanna point out to you, because I'm clearly obsessed with food, these guys are great if you want to make a no carb salad now what i would recommend is still you know peeling this off and then using your 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 peeler 
to peel off layers of the carrot and it could be like a spaghetti palm platter, not platter, pasta dish. You can do this um, even with zucchini and it's like you're not wasting it. I, I like to not waste things. So I was telling you like at the end of this, you can do so many things with this. You can put this in a, a compost um, container if you have it outside and you can use it to make some soil for your gardens. Who has a garden? Oh, you do. What are you growing in your garden? Are you gonna send me some kale? I'm not joking, kale is my favorite. I had kale chips today. I'd love to show you how to make that sometimes. It's pretty simple. You can also use this stuff if you want to make a stew or you, what you can do is make like a vegetable broth. Yes, there's honestly, you know how it is. We are trying to reuse, we're trying to recycle, try to be a little more mindful. You know, we don't want to waste. And there really is a way to use almost everything. You're doing a great job. Have you made a charcuterie board before? You could have fooled me. Looks like you have. Make sure I get the last part of the carrot out of here. We'll be very careful. Ooh, by the way, I think one of the best parts of handling food is smelling the food. So I don't know about you, but the fragrance of carrots is very nice. Now, here comes the fun part. Let's just make this known that there is no right or wrong way to do this, okay? I like to set up my charcuterie board so that it looks presentable, okay? And I happen to like my carrots when they're a little thinner because I plan on dipping it, I didn't even show you my blue cheese, in my blue cheese dressing dip. Now, if you have sour cream, you can add some chives, some onion powder, salt, black pepper. If you have some ranch dressing, awesome. You can even use hummus. You could use mayo and add different spices. It's, it's, it depends on what you like. So Again, I like to dip my carrots in my dip. So for that reason, I'm going to prepare them a certain way. Again, we're, we're using a knife, so we need to firmly hold the carrot. Yes, take your time, just like that. And I'm gonna cut down, right? This is a little much for, um, I'd say something to dip. So what I'm going to do is cut this so it's a little thinner. And then ideally you wanna make it about the same size. Again, it's okay if it's not, it's just about making it look presentable. And do you guys know what symmetry is? Oh yes, symmetry is when something is basically the same on both sides. Now. I wanna point out to you, I'm done using this big knife for now because I'm finding the big knife is getting in the way of me cutting my carrot. So what I'm going to do is switch knives. This one's more appropriate for my carrot. So I'm gonna carefully hold it and slice it down the middle, just like this. Raise your hand if you've ever had a white carrot before. They're really good, honestly, I, I really like them. So I'm gonna cut this fella in half again because I'm trying to make it as symmetrical as possible, almost the same size. And at the end is when I can get a little fussy, a little more detail oriented and, and have a preference. So we got this guy and he's a little bigger than I would like him to be. So I'm gonna carefully cut in the center again, pressing down. And guys, if you need help, it is okay to ask for help. I think. I think you guys know I'm an adult. Hard to tell sometimes, but I ask for help all the time because I want to do things well. I don't want to make a mistake. And I also want to do a good job. So I think you guys, if, if you need help, go for it because you can always learn something. It doesn't matter how old we are, believe me. If, if you choose to keep learning for the rest of your life, then you are off to an excellent start. Okay. So here we go, we're piling these guys up. Now, I want to point out to you that we have basically the colors of the rainbow here. I think I'm missing one color. Uh, yeah, if I had blue, we'd be all set. But the more colors and variety you add into your diet, the healthier you may be, because all the different colors offer different types of vitamins. By the way, I like them smaller. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to make it easier for myself. Instead of individually cutting all the carrots, I feel confident and comfortable enough to cut them all at the same time for the most part. And voila, they're about the same size. So I'm gonna set them aside. I've cut a lot of white carrots. This gives me an idea of how much is going to come out from each of these carrots. So I'm not going to need the rest of these guys. So what I'm going to do is place them over here. And I recommend that you do this in all areas of life because we do better, I think, if we have order. And if there's chaos, 
we could be distracted. It might bring us down. So again, set yourself up for success and clean up as you go along. Best part, really. I, I hate to tell you this. Yes, it is the best part because it's so pretty. I'm going to cut it in the center. And once again, we have our beautiful color. Now, this guy isn't as big as the other one. So I might want to consider, um, I could add more purple, but I also might think like the purple can be displayed in the middle and I can make white on one side, white on the other. It's really nice and you can get really creative with this. You know, especially now, we got to be careful. This is a nice activity you can be doing at home with your kids, with your friends, and it's fun to eat vegetables. I promise. When we were kids, we used to have these, I call them kid platters. And what my mom would do is she would get a bunch of Ritz crackers. Who likes Ritz? Oh my gosh, me too. So good. They never get old to me. And she would put some peanut butter on some of them and some jelly on the other. And who remembers fluff? Any 80s babies here? Raise your hand, 80s babies. So the fluff is like a marshmallow, kind of like a peanut butter texture, but it's sticky, it's nice and thick. And you can make a peanut butter and fluff sandwich, but of course with the Ritz crackers. Then she would have some chips, she'd have some grapes, which I do not have currently, but I do recommend for a charcuterie board. Grapes are great, because again, you want pickets. And we would just have these kids platters loaded with all these different things on it, and it was fun, it was delicious, and, you know, it just made life more interesting as kids. We had a really good time. So I could see that my carrots, the orange ones, are different sizes. No big deal. Because if you really want to get fussy, you could cut off the ends. But I don't want to cut that end off because it's a perfectly good carrot. So look how much stuff I have produced just from cutting three carrots. That being said, I have to think, am I going to need all these supplies that I have? Again, it is better to have more than not enough. So what I'm going to do to make space for myself is I'm going to set aside my lovely carrot combinations. Yes, you can move yours over too. That's right. Just take your time because we don't want to drop the carrots because your pet hermit crab might waddle across the kitchen floor and grab the carrot. <laughs> do you have a hermit crab? I was trying to be funny. We had hermit crabs back in the day. We used to place them on our backs and we tried to guess which crab it was because we had like six of them. So it's like, I think it's Goldie. No, it's baby Fred. I usually got the answers right. Okay. I love talking to you guys. Which one is your favorite color, by the way? The yellow, the red, or the orange? I think I like the yellow the best. But they all taste different, by the way. So we are going to probably end up using, I would say, about half to a quarter each. Because, again, I'm trying to do variety. I want it to be colorful. I'm going to hold my pepper, and I'm going to put my knife at the top, and I'm going to bring that knife down. I'm going to rotate it, and I'm going to continue to go down. Shall we open up? Hello. I am here to teach you how to make a charcuterie board. No, I am. Okay, I'm done. Had to do it. Okay. So you can see here, this is pretty clean cut, which is awesome. There's not a lot of seeds. I don't know about you. I don't particularly want to eat the seeds. So I am going to cut off the top portion and I don't want to waste my, my pepper. So I'm going to cut around it pretty close so that I can use as much pepper as possible. And again, I got my scrap. And by the way, guys, you're going to find pepper seeds on your counter if you are using them. It's inevitable, it's incredible, they just happen to show up. Now please note, I got a little more to take out. So I think to make it easier for me, I'm just gonna cut this in half. This way I have a better access, better access to the seeds, and I'm going to take the knife and scrape it off in the direction that is away from my body. Because again, I am using a knife. I need to be mindful for what I'm doing and I need to be careful. I'm gonna set this guy aside because I have a feeling I'm not going to need him. And you can do this any way you want, but because I like to dip things, I'm probably going to make it similar to how my carrots are cut, just because it'll make it nice on the board. So I'm literally holding it down. I like to take the top and point and bring it across. And ideally, I'm doing it away from me, but I find it a little more in control if I do it this way. But I still make sure that the knife isn't going towards my body as much. 
and I'm watching my fingers. One of my friends told me when he cuts carrots or whatever he's cutting, he takes his knuckles and he puts it like this, and he's still able to hold down whatever he's cutting, and this way your fingers aren't in trouble. I thought that was clever, but I do not have the skill that this man does. He is a wonderful professional chef. I am an expert at charcuterie boards. I am an expert at making kid platters. And I'm an expert at eating them. Did I tell you that? It's on my resume. So these are beautiful. These are great. And anything that's left over, you can throw these in a skillet. You can make, I don't know, Mexican food. You could get some onions, some chicken, some of your peppers. Do not waste any of this. And do not feel pressure to eat it. It's a vegetable. It can be used again. Now, funny enough, I got this from uh, Trader Joe's, and it was in a plastic like bag that was sealed. I took it out. It's already cut. So I think it was a pretty fresh cut today. Maybe it got crushed in my bag. But just be mindful and take a look. I'm going to actually cut above it. Um, I feel like it's smiling. And I'm going to cut down straight like this. Flip the fella over. Let's see how many seeds we're working with. Okay. This guy, I can take care of this later. I'm gonna set him aside, because this is basically a clean cut. I have four seeds, it's pretty good. Take my seeds, I'm gonna put them in my glass bowl of my scraps. Yes, okay. So, oh, what are you putting on your charcuterie board? I can see that you have something green. Ah, sugar snaps, those are really good. Definitely recommend them. And what do you have? Very cool. Yes, chocolate is an excellent idea for a charcuterie board. Um, typically, we got salty, sweet, and crunchy things, right? But I will always find an excuse to add vegetables to whatever I do. Honestly, if, if I'm, or fruit, if I'm making pancakes, you know there's going to be blueberries in them, there's going to be raspberries. I will just go for it. I love produce, anything that comes from the earth. Does anyone ever try butternut squash? bake it in the oven, and then what you can do is, is puree it, and then you can make it into like a nice sauce. I made it the other day, it was great. If you would like to get that recipe, do let me know. Okay guys, so I'm setting aside my orange. Look at this, we have basically a rainbow started here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hold this guy here, and again, I'm gonna point at the top, pull it down, rotate it, and I'm going to separate them. I will deal with the pits later. But again, I do not need all this. And I'm going to cut off the top portion that has uh, the seeds because really not to eating seeds. It says, anybody want to grow a pepper inside them? Just kidding. I used to think that as a kid, that if I ate a seed, I would grow a plant. Did anybody else think that? You think that too? Oh my goodness. Don't worry. The body's pretty tough. No, no trees are going to grow inside of you. But if you can avoid eating a lot of seeds, I'm gonna suggest that. Just think about your intestines and digestion. All right, this guy is beautiful. But I'm still gonna scrape away my scraps so that it's nice and clean for me. And I'm not gonna accidentally pick these guys up. Just push them to the side like this. Scrape off my knife. Voila. All right, so I'm gonna continue to cut some red slices here. These are really sweet. I find that green peppers are really good if you want to saute them, for instance. Um, but if you want something a little sweeter, a little less bitter, especially for a charcuterie board or like a kid's platter, crudite platter, I do suggest going for the citrusy looking ones. So the reds, your oranges, and your yellows. Okay, guys, this is starting to look really good. It smells like a garden in this kitchen. No objections there. Do you like the smell of garden? Oh, we have something else in common, don't we? So I am got, I am done with my beautiful peppers, so I am setting those aside, right? And then what I'm going to do is work on my cucumbers. Now, I'm thinking about adding the cheese, but the cheese should probably be sliced towards the end because it is perishable. Yes, perishable means it may not stay as fresh, like it, it may not last as long. So for instance, if you have some milk, I would not leave it out on the counter for too long. Pour yourself a glass of milk and then put it back in the fridge. 
especially in the summer when it's too hot and you do not want to leave out perishable items. Vegetables are also perishable, but milk is very sensitive. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is grab remember, and I am going to cut the end just as I did with my carrots. It's not bad if you eat this part. I just, it's a preference. It's not my thing, which is all right. So I'm gonna cut them off, I'm gonna put them in my scrapple. I may or may not use all of this. I'm thinking about it, but I wanna make sure I incorporate some green. I do have some carrots, excuse me, I do have some broccoli, so it should be good. Now you have options. If you would like, what you can do is slice this and make it nice and, and long like a carrot, or you could also slice it like chips. But since we're doing a theme here, I'm gonna to continue to cut it in a certain direction. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll cut this in half. I'm going to firmly hold it. Look at these guys. They look great. And then what I'm going to do is hold it and cut the center. Cucumbers are great. They're super hydrating. Look at these little this, right? You know, if you want to make yourself a nice, refreshing glass of water, throw in some cucumbers. I happen to love plain water, but it's also fun to dress it up a little bit. Oh, and it's another way to get vegetables into your diet. You can use cucumbers and sushi. Has anyone ever taken a sushi making class? Oh, you are missing out. You got to try it. It's fun. And if you don't like sushi because you're not a fan of raw fish, there are so many options. You can go vegetarian, you name it. Okay. So I think that this is good. Um, if I'm trying to estimate how much space we're going to have on our platter. So this works out good for now. If I decide I need more, I know where to get them. I'm gonna set them aside over here. Now, the fun part is going to start. I have my turkey. And what I like about this is, for instance, it, it's, it doesn't have antibiotics, it doesn't have nitrates. These are things we must look out for, folks, when we are buying um, packaged produce. What's also great about this, it, it is resealable. Now, this is a very perishable fella, so you definitely want to eat it in a couple days, but I take the tab and I pull it back and I can use it and then I can close it. It's sticky, it has like an adhesive. So what I'm gonna carefully do is I'm going to take out my lovely turkey one at a time. Well, first we'll take the whole bunch out. Again, I don't need this, so I'm gonna set it aside just so that I've set myself up for success. Now they're all together, kind of like slices of cheese. And you know, if you're vegan, if you're vegetarian, no problem. You can get vegetarian vegan options or you don't have to use them at all. So what I'm doing guys is I am separating the turkey slices like this. And what the plan is, there is a plan, is I'm going to roll them up and it looks very pretty when you do that. And you'll see that I'm going to roll them so that they're um, kind of shaped like the carrots and the peppers. It's just to make it look more presentable. Um, I'm going to place my cheese here. I'm going to slide this guy down. I'm going to move my bowl. See how I'm making sure I clear my, my space for myself because if you have too much things in your face, too many things in your face, it can become overwhelming. Now, I have with me here my final charcuterie board, but now is the part that's fun because we get to decorate. Now that we've cleaned our produce, now that we've cut it up, we get to decorate. So oh, fun. So I have to think, how do I want to do this? Now, I think I would like to display the meat, for instance. So what I will do is I will push aside my vegetables. Now, I have it set up like this so you guys can see it better. But typically, I probably would have put these on a plate or something and then decorated it. But again, there's no wrong way to do this. It's, it's what you have in your house. So I'm setting these aside. Look at the colors, look at the brilliance. Yes, let's count the, the colors. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, that's right, seven. So I was telling you that I like to roll the meat. So what I'm gonna do, it's almost like a little tortilla or something. I'm gonna put it down in the center and I'm going to pinch it with my fingers and I'm gonna roll it just like this. And because it's it's like, damp, it's gonna stick together, especially if you put the part that's like folded on itself like that, it will stay. It looks like a little, hello, or like a little flute or something. So I'm gonna place it down right here, and I'm gonna do the same for the others. I have the space here, I'm gonna roll it, and remember, 
you want it to be about the same size because that's what I'm going for. And you want to keep it similar thickness. And sometimes they do come apart, which is okay because we are not in a rush. This is a relaxing prom project and process and we're just going to love it. We're going to have fun. So I can see that it's coming out really pretty and I'm excited because I have all this great stuff to add. Um, you know, I, I was going through a phase where it was like I'm getting a little tired of eating just kale salads lately because that is like super food. If you want to turn into a superhero, eat kale every day. It's like Popeye and his spinach. Do you know who Popeye is? You can Google him. He's cool. So it's sort of like saying, you know, you, you eat your vegetables and you get your, your strength and your vitamins. And I absolutely agree. You should. But everything in moderation, folks. What does that mean? Don't overdo anything. You know, they say to drink a lot of water. If you drink too much water, you're going to get full. You're going to make more stops to the bathroom than you want to. So if you're not sure how much water you should drink, you can look it up on Google or you can ask your doctor. You recommend that. Asking questions is good. Double checking is fine. Asking for help is even better. Okay. Almost done rolling these guys. They're doing great. They're staying in place and they're so pretty from this end. They all look very smooth. And I am excited because I do like food that's a little savory at times. And guys, anything that's left over, you can make a sandwich. It's fine. So I told you that I would like to display the meat in the center of my charcuterie board. So that's what I'm going to do. Fun fact. I was a cheerleader in high school and college, so I am big on formations. So when we were in school, we would put them together like pyramid style. So that is sort of my vision right now. So you can layer things or you can just spread them out. But keep in mind, you want it to look right. It could be symmetrical. It, it just as long as it looks pretty, you're fine. So we have these guys here. Now, I know I'm going to run out of room, so I'm going to start piling them. And this is what I was talking about, the pyramid. And you want to make sure it's sturdy because as you can see, these guys can roll away. Literally, they can roll away. I'm going to suggest if you have four on the bottom, this fella came undone. Come on, dude. What you want to do is you have four on the bottom. You got three on the top, for instance. And that is like a pyramid formation. Okay. And what happens is your guests can come and pick now, or you, maybe your family, think about this as a project for later. And then what we're going to do is prepare our um, peppers. And I'm going to make them all face the same way, basically, or at least the same direction. Um, and you want to do similar to what I did. You lay them out and they, it, we want to cover this board, guys. So we got to layer things as well because we're going to run out of space. And it's sort of like when you're coloring in a picture and you don't want to leave any white spots. You want to make sure that you've colored everything in, in detail. The same thing goes with your charcuterie board or crudite platter. You want to make sure there not a lot of wood is showing or not a lot of the board is showing. So I am also, I'm focusing on basically one thing at a time, guys. And that can be very hard for us to do. So like I said, peppers first. Then I'll worry about all the other details. And I'm just setting them aside here. Um, I can see some of them are different sizes. But I, I it did try to make them as closely cut as possible. But they're all going in the same place, guys. You're just going to, where are they going? Yo belly, right? That's all. Don't worry. Okay. Who, who likes to eat peppers here? What do you eat peppers with? In a salad. Excellent. Where else can you eat peppers? Ooh, in a sandwich. Yep. You could, like a Philly cheesesteak. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I love food. Raise your hand if you love food. Double hand. Raising the foot. That's how much respect I give towards food. Okay. So we have this pile complete, which is good. The next thing I said to you is, oh, we've done our, we've done our peppers. Let's move on to the carrots. How fun. So the purple ones are really pretty. And I happen to love the color. So I'm going to display it so that the color is facing up. It's gonna make it look fun. And you wanna put the bigger fellows on the bottom because again, it's like a cheerleading pyramid. You wanna make sure that it, it's a good foundation. If you put the little ones on the bottom, they might wobble off and it's not as sturdy as you'd like it to be. So there we go. I didn't think that cheerleading would come into play today, but it did. You can learn from anything, guys. And 
you, life teaches us many things. And it's sort of like when you take that hard math class, I didn't finish my peppers. I thought I did. Um, you think I'm never going to use this again. I didn't think I'd ever be able to make a cheerleading reference when it comes to cooking, but look, I did. So does anybody take any other classes? Have you done a no bake cooking class? That is great for kids, especially, or people like me who like convenience. And what happens is you're making food, but you're not using a stove, you're not using an oven. And you know, that's probably good for a younger person to keep in mind. They can use the microwave. And there's so many no bake projects. If you guys want some recipes, let me know. I'm actually teaching a no bake cooking class on Friday. And we are making a chocolate chip cookie pudding pot. You heard right. But I am going to put it in one of those massive aluminum trays. So I'm going to have to share it with my family because I don't think it's a good idea for me to eat all that wonderfulness. Yeah. So many fun ideas. Again, the internet gives me my inspiration. You know, where do you get your ideas? Who has a cookbook at home? You have a cookbook? Cool. Okay. I am serious now. The peppers are now complete. So I have my carrots on this side. I feel like putting my carrots here. And we want to fill out the space. You put the bigger pieces on the bottom and you're gonna slowly but surely layer them and you don't want them to roll off. So we wanna make sure it's a nice sturdy bottom and we're just gonna pile it on like a cheerleading pyramid. And you don't have to do this the way I'm doing it. This has worked for me in the past. So that's why I'm doing it like this. But if you want, Try something different. That's awesome. Okay, we're almost done with our carrots because we had three different kinds of carrots. We had three different kinds of peppers. We're awesome. Variety is good. Yeah, it makes me think of like the Skittles commercial, Taste the Rainbow. This is literally the rainbow. So what am I doing? I'm making sure that I put the bigger pieces more on the bottom so that it's nice and steady. By the way, when you are doing this, I highly recommend you place the charcuterie board in the spot that you're going to serve it because you see what's going on here? I am making a cheerleading platter. So what can happen is it could tip over or you know something can roll off and we don't want that. So I am going to have my green cucumbers surrounded on both sides because they're beautiful. And you have the option, which side do you want to display? The light green, um, the darker green, it's really up to you. But it just makes it fun. See, now I'm trying to make it look a little more creative. I have it on the outside, but now I'm starting to make it so that they have like cucumber wings on the side, which is fun. And um, anything left over, you can eat it. You can quickly pile it. Guys, I know my timer's gonna go off, but I'm having so much fun, I can't finish just yet. So I'm gonna turn this guy off because it will go off. And um, you know, you can, you can focus and make this into like a breakfast thing, for instance. Now I just handled something with my phone, so I'm gonna rinse my hands once again. Um, you know, if you wanted to have all your berries, like my friend mentioned before, you could do bananas, um, you could put granola. Instead of using blue cheese like I am, you could put yogurt in the center or like a Cool Whip. Like there are just so many awesome choices. Okay. So I'm going to take my lovely cruciferous friend here. What did I just say? It's a dark green, very high in, in antioxidants and vitamins. And look, I'm having fun here. Now, the stems are not as pretty in my eyes. Your eyes, maybe it's different. So what I'm doing is I am trying to tuck in the stems. Now, this is all about symmetry. If I put one up here, I got to put them over here. And I'm trying to, you know, frame it and, and crown it. It's so fun. This is the best part. I, I just love decorating. Let me see what you're doing. Yours looks great. Do you want to be a special guest the next time I teach somebody how to do a charcuterie board? Oh, I would love that. Okay. I got some leftover fellas. I don't need them. They're very small. I will place them there. I also have, of course, my tomatoes. Tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. It's all good. And I am going to place them around. Now, it's kind of funny because if you want, you could technically make a face, like a smiley face. That's always fun. Does anyone ever make smiley faces on their pancakes or waffles? I highly recommend it. 
That is a really fun no bake class, by the way, or concepts. What you do is you buy the pancakes or you could make them. It doesn't matter. The frozen ones, for instance, and then you get a bunch of toppings, just like what I have with my charcuterie board, a bunch of toppings. And then you could put whipped cream, you can put um, nuts, you can put berries, chocolate chips. It's awesome. I'm going to place my dates near the, the oranges, oranges, the orange peppers. It's so bright and pretty, and I think it'll stand out over there. I'm also going to take my dates or my figs so that they mirror my dates, which is good. And I'm going to pile these fellas over here. Guys, you can do so much with this. It's just whatever you have left over, find a sassy, fun, creative way to eat your food. You know, we, we have to enjoy what we do. We spend a lot of our time sleeping and working. Well, maybe you don't work yet, but you spend a lot of time in school. That's great. Okay, I'm going to take some of my olives. I'm going to put them over here. I'm going to put them down, spread them out. Now, when you're doing something like this, you want to keep in mind people are going to touch it. So we ask everybody to wash their hands. And what we can also have them do is you can take toothpicks and you can put sticks down. What you can also do is you can have like your little um, spreader knives or your little forks and then they can poke it and then it works out really nicely. So I'm going to add my rainbow heirloom carrots on both sides because it's going to look awesome with my purple and yellow carrots. Basically, it's complementing and it's the same color. So I don't know who's going to eat all this food, guys. You're just going to have to come over for an outdoor socially distanced safe party. Well, maybe I'll eat this all. I'm sure I could. I'll find a million ways to use these vegetables, let me tell you. And, of course, the sun-dried tomatoes. I can see that it's about the same amount as my olives, so that is the perfect opportunity to put these guys right over here. And, of course, I have my lovely pistachios. Oh, my board's getting tight. And I'm going to put some over here. And these guys, are they look good when they, they pile on top of each other. You can spread them out. It's, it's all good. Who doesn't love pistachios? Um, if you have cashews, great. What, if, what kind do you have at home? Almonds, yum. If you have, my favorites are the macadamia nuts. Oh my goodness. I do not put those in the kitchen with me because they will disappear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm telling you the truth. That's my weakness. It's kryptonite. Okay. Now, the last thing we're going to do, well, actually, the second to last thing we're going to do is handle our perishable items. So I've got my my other board. I'm going to carefully, oh my goodness, I cannot say this enough, carefully slide my charcuterie board down for a moment. And I'm going to prepare to cut the cheese. And, you know, because if this is going to be out on display, guys, this really should be done last because we want our perishable items to last as long as possible. What kind of cheese are you using? I love mozzarella because it's mild and it's delicious. Uh-huh, you have Swiss cheese, that's awesome. Did you roll your Swiss cheese like I rolled my cold cuts? And guys, I'm slicing it like this. Now, I think you can see by my platter here, there's not much space. So I'm gonna be mindful when I cut these. You know, this is the first step to cut the cheese. Oh, I made a joke, I wasn't trying to. And then you can cut them again in a smaller shape and that'll make it fit on the board. You want this problem. You don't want to say, oh, I don't have enough stuff to put on my board. You want to say, oh, I got too much stuff. And then you can get creative and spread it out so it's really nice and symmetrical. You need to be careful when you're slicing this because it can be difficult to get it through um, because cheese can be a little thicker. Um, I'm going to put the zip elastic in the scraps on the scrap. And I'm going to cut this fella just like this. Take my time because, again, I am not in a rush. No rush whatsoever. Okay, where is this going to go? I'm going to slide the board down and bring my fella over here nice and slowly because this is where I am planning on presenting my crudite platter. I have a little bit of space left. I'm going to bring this down so you can see it just a little better. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice my cheese just like this. And I'm doing this because I know I have no space left, which is great. And it'll be able to fill up some of the spaces that are left. And it's more of like the theme of the carrots and the peppers. I'm cutting them so that they're a little longer. Um, 
you know, you can cut them in, in, in circles. It's really depends on what look you're going for, what you're most comfortable doing. I love mozzarella cheese. It makes me want a margarita pizza. Who wants a margarita pizza? I told you it's part of the socially distant outdoor party we're going to have. You're going to help me eat the crudite platter, the charcuterie board, and we'll have some pizza. Next time, folks, next time. The point here is to make yourself some healthy and delicious food. And it should be a money saver because you want to use what you already have. Okay. All right. So then I'm going to take the cheese and I'm gonna fill it in the spots. And I told you I cut them the shape and it's perfect because it fits nice here. Um, you know, these are this is a great meal, for instance. Maybe you're not in the mood to have a salad or I don't know, lasagna. Who's not in the mood to have lasagna? I'm always in the mood. But this is, you could just eat this. You know, it's like a picket. Who likes tapas? I love tapas, little appetizers and pickets. You can get full with this stuff. Definitely can. So, oh my goodness. I've got so much stuff here. This is just too beautiful for words. I might start shedding tears. I know, guys. And this is very, very Instagram worthy, let me tell you. This, you can put on some fun filters and make it nice and colorful. And it's, it's just very presentable. And your guests will be impressed with you. They'll be happy that you took the time to do this. And you they, they'll think it's professional that you bought it from the store. If you really take your time, then you tell them, no, I prepared this. They'll be blown away, believe me. All right, so I don't think there's much space left, which is a good thing. Now, typically, I would put my, uh, my glass bowl in the center, but my turkey took over, so that's okay. I have here a little thing, uh, a little bowl to put my blue cheese. I mentioned to you, you could do mayo, you could do sour cream, uh, an artichoke dip, a lot of mustard hummus so many wonderful options i'm gonna take my time and i'm gonna pour it in just like that i know a lot of people aren't crazy about blue cheese it is an acquired taste and i can't go back i, I just love it so much i put it in my salad i i might put it like even in a sandwich i gotta switch it up guys you gotta switch it up with me too all right so I'm gonna move aside what I got here. And I think we can make a little bit of space for the blue cheese because it'll be the perfect framed center. Oh, of course I made room. Beautiful, beautiful. We'll put this fella right here. He's nicely framed. We're gonna push the broccoli in to frame it just like that. Oh my goodness, folks. We need to take a bird's eye view picture of this. This is just beautiful. I love what you produce, guys. You should be proud of yourselves. Okay, let's make it so you can see it a little better. That You see how, how tall I am? This thing is the size of my body. It's a ton of food and it's awesome. All right, so this is very Instagram worthy. And, you know, if you're making something like this, it's sort of like drawing a picture. Let's take a picture of it so you have that memory. It's And then your phone basically will have the date. So it's like you've dated and signed it, right? So let's see how this picture came out. Not so sure if it's gonna come out so great in the camera. Hard with the lighting. But anyways, guys, what goes great often with the charcuterie board is a nice glass of wine. But if it's for a kid, cranberry juice, why not? Do me a favor, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Please try out the charcuterie board and share with your family. It's been great um, being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Twenty five hundred. Whoa. Oh, oh my. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Mix up. Then you guys are correct. Wherever you are, let me see you jump, 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 jump. She's pulling out a card. Yeah, is it? Is it? Is it? It is!
just a few moments, we're going to get our scavenger hunt started. That is exactly on point. Uh, Brian's teeth are amazing. 